Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for a better family history next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Ashley from Mass Effect, a character I've made fun of a lot in the past. I might not think she's very interesting, I might not think she's very useful as a squad member to bring on missions, and I might always blow her up on Vermeer. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need weapons. That's kind of your whole thing. But some of Ashley's weapons do other stuff, like concussive shots to blast someone across the map and grenades that explode when you throw them. So still weapons, but not weapons in the D&D &D sense. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. That's the one that's most important for aiming weapons. Follow that up with strength. Eventually, we need to use heavy armor and I don't want a penalty. Intelligence after that, the weapons you're using are pretty high tech, and Ashley is pretty into history. A military brat with a penchant for history? That's a big red flag. Constitution next, it's weird to be a tank in the game where everyone is using exclusively ranged weapons, but Ashley has a healthy health pool. Wisdom is a bit low, Ashley isn't great at reading the room. Turns out a squad full of aliens probably doesn't appreciate someone who dislikes aliens. Charisma is the dumb stat though, the only persuasive thing Ashley says is leave me behind to die. You don't have to tell me twice. Ashley is a human, something she's very proud of. Yikes. You can grab a feat like athlete to add one to your strength score. You can stand up from prone with five feet of movement, make a running long jump with five feet of run up, and you get a climbing speed equal to your normal speed. I really just wanted the strength boost, but the rest isn't bad. Bump your dexterity and intelligence with your two free points, take medicine for your skill of choice, and the soldier background for athletics and intimidation. It's a pretty vanilla background, but Ashley is a pretty vanilla gal. She also gets mad at other flavors of ice. Ice cream. We'll kick things off as a fighter for two more skills from the fighter list, like history and perception, to talk about the first contact war, and see stuff good. For your fighting style, archery adds two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons to rata the tata a little better. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, giving us the first piece of the fitness puzzle. It's not really a puzzle, it's just working out. Wait, can I just make this a James Vega video? No, I gotta do the squad members in the order they appear in the games means James's last self-imposed rule, but I'm sticking to it. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest, helping you get some rapid fire. At least if you could use a weapon with the loading property to make two attacks in the same turn. Detour time. First level artificers are magical tinkerers, letting you put tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items. 90% of the lore comes from people leaving behind data pads or audio logs, so give Shepard a bunch of tedium to do in the codex. You get cantrips and spells as well, like light to see in the dark with your bad human eyes, and message to whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you, allowing for a bit of communication on the comms. For your first level spells, cure wounds heals 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier to a creature you touch, letting you apply a little first aid. Identify tells you what a magical item does and how many charges it has left so you'll know what all of those items Shepard is ignoring do. Second level artificer is what we're here for, infusions that make you comparable to the other squad members. Repeating shot makes a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances and adds one to the attack rolls, giving it unlimited ammo and you can ignore the loading property to make two attacks in the same round with a weapon that normally makes you reload. Now we've got those Mass Effect 1 guns, personally my favorite in the series since I like to play RPGs more than shooters. Still prefer Mass Effect 2 as an overall experience though, probably because Ashley isn't there. Enhanced Defense adds one to the AC of a set of armor so you can wear something a little bit thicker. You can learn two more infusions, but those are really the only ones I need, so wow, goggles and night bag of holding, see in the dark and carry all the recoil dampeners. Back over to Fighter now where we can choose a martial archetype. Eventually Ashley does become a Spectre, so we're gonna go Battle Master. That'll give you 4d8 superiority die you can spend on three maneuvers. Precision Attack will make you a better marksman, adding your superiority die to your attack roll to make sure you hit. Pushing attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature you hit with a weapon attack. Failing that, they're knocked back 15 feet. I double checked. You absolutely do not need to use a melee attack for this, which is hilarious. What, do you load the gun harder? Goading attack lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature you hit with an attack. Failing that, they have disadvantage on attacks against creatures that aren't you, helping you draw some fire. So far, your biggest boons to the team are as a decoy and a backpack. Now we're playing Ashley. Both goading and pushing attack add your superior 
superiority dying to the damage, so that was just a bit. Ashley hits really hard. You get a set of artisan's tools of your choice from the Student of War. Pick anything except calligraphy, she doesn't deserve it. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Bump your dexterity first to shoot really, really good with your guns or crossbows if your DM doesn't have guns in their setting. Doesn't really matter, you have repeating shot, it works for both. Fifth level fighters can put that repeating shot to work with extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action or four with an action surge. Some people might think that's overkill though. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement so you can cap off your dexterity modifier. Fun fact, if you monoclass anything other than fighter, you'd be at level eight and still just be getting your second ability score improvement. If you ever want to do a quick dip in your build, fighter's great for that and for, you know, other reasons later. Seventh level battle masters can know your enemy, letting you know two pieces of information about a creature you've studied for a minute. You learn their HP, AC, constitution, strength, dexterity, fighter levels, or total levels, and whether they're better than you, worse than you, or equal to them in those regards. Quick reminder though, Rex is not your enemy. Do not shoot him. Why? Oh God, why? For this level's maneuvers, we'll grab some specter training with commander's strike, letting you tell someone else to make an attack using their reaction and add your superiority die to the damage. I've always thought that the best thing you can do with Ashley is just get someone else instead. Maneuvering attack lets a creature of your choice move half their movement speed as a reaction after you hit a different creature with an attack and their movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. You also get to add your superiority die to the damage, so it can be a great way to retreat. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement or feat. The sharpshooter feat will let you fire at maximum range without disadvantage. You can ignore all but full cover and take a negative five penalty to your attack roll to add 10 to the damage roll. After the archery fighting style and repeating shot buff, that's only a negative two penalty from the dex plus proficiency, so it should help you shred the baddies. Oh no, is Ashley gonna be kind of good? Not without some more multi-classing, she's not. Back over to Artificer. Third level Artificers can choose a specialty and Artillerists get an Eldritch Cannon they can use as a bonus action to do a couple of different things. The only out of character option is a Flamethrower, which, you know, is a Flamethrower. The Protector refreshes your shields, giving allies within 10 feet of it temporary HP equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier as a bonus action. Force Ballista fires a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 force damage and pushes the target back 5 feet with no save. So you could really spam some concussive blasts with 4 pushing attacks from Action Surge, followed by a Force Ballista bonus action to move someone 65 feet away in a single turn if they fail all the pushing attack saves. For a different shield option, the shield spell is free from the Artillerist list, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction, which is 24 after enhanced defense on a set of plate mail. Absolutely bananas. Oh, why is she good? I don't like it. Four level artificers get an ability score improvement or feat. The tough feat adds two to your HP for every level you have and every level you get after this, a total of 40 by the end of things, since we can't invest in constitution quite as much as I'd like. Fifth level artillerists get an arcane firearm, adding a D8 of extra damage to one spell attack per round from that spell casting focus. Not all that useful for you, since we're not using Scorching Ray, though it's free from the artillerist list, so check it out at home, it's quite good. I'm here for Shatter, also free from the artillerist list, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's really good at blowing up inorganic materials, since those will have disadvantage on the save, making this grenade very, very good against the Geth. And walls, if you don't like walls. Six level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus for checks with the tools you're proficient with. That's thieves, tinkerers, woodcarvers, and whatever you chose from student of war that was not calligraphy. You also get two more infusions. Spell refueling ring lets you recover a spell slot of third level or lower once per day, giving you an extra grenade or a bigger grenade later. Sending stones are some rocky talkies that you can cast the sending spell between, letting you call your friends wherever they are. If you have friends, I think Udina likes you. That makes sense. Udina is also the worst. Seventh level artificers get flash of genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to any ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you an amount of times per long rest equal to your intelligence modifier. That's not all that high at the moment. Let's bump it up a bit. At the eighth level of artificer for another ability score improvement where we're going to invest in intelligence for a more accurate turret, stronger shields from the turret, and better flashes of genius, and a better fireball. At the ninth level of artificer where you can learn third level spells like fireball, which is free from the artillerist list, forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's just a big old grenade. If you'd rather focus on shooting, the haste spell adds to your AC, gives you advantage on dexterity saves, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or make one more attack. That's up to five attacks in one round with action surge. I wonder if we could push that higher. Back over to fighter. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Pairs really well with flash of genius, since you can re-roll, then add three from your intelligence modifier. This is working together too well. I don't want Ashley to be good. Tenth level fighters get improved combat superiority, making your superiority die D10s, and you can learn two more maneuvers. 
Rally gives a creature your superiority die plus your charisma modifier in temporary HP. Your charisma modifier is negative one, so it's a minimum of one. That's bad. Good. It should be. Commanding Presence lets you add your superiority die to an Intimidation, Persuasion, or Performance check. It's probably how you're able to get Shepard to blow you up and redeem your family's name by dying. Our capstone is the 11th level of fighter for one more extra attack, that's 3 with your action, 6 with an action surge, and up to 7 with a hasted action, unloading a clip that never runs out, but eventually does overheat, I suppose. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're great at dealing damage with a magic weapon, 3 attacks per round, sharpshooter, easier sharpshooter from the archery fighting style, superiority die, and a bonus action for ballista to boot. Oof. You're also pretty tanky with around 175 HP, base 19 AC from enhanced defense, 21 with haste, 26 with haste and a shield spell, and methods to heal that up as well. Finally, that's kind of it. You're a good soldier. For weaknesses, your intelligence is only plus three, so the ballista and grenades aren't that good. You're also lacking charisma, so getting people to like you could be an issue. Finally, you're Ashley. Ashley's the worst. Sorry if y'all like Ashley, but this is a really solid build. So really, I'm sorry if you dislike Ashley like I do, because he's really good. We're all losers today, but we're also all winners. This was just an important piece to get to the Mass Effect 2 squad, and I'm sure there's nobody as bad on that squad. Oh god, is that Dwight Schrute? Root in a bodysuit? Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.